right, we're going to talk about something today that's near and dear to everyone's heart. It is negotiating wages for mechanics. So a couple of things before we get started. For a long time, there have been a lot of people in the, in the blue collar life that have given in exchange for most of their time on earth a measly wage. For skilled people, there is a way to get higher pay. However, nobody's going to volunteer you that pay. It's just not going to happen. They'll give you a pizza. They'll do uh, turkey at Thanksgiving, but they're not going to say, hey, you know, I think you deserve $5 more. However, if you're worth $5 more, they'll pay you. I guarantee you they will pay you. But you have to make it make sense. So going to the negotiating table is not always easy for young people, especially when you don't know where you fall in as far as the spectrum of what you can do and what you can't. There's some metrics that you can use, the person, uh, you know, personally to see where you're at as far as being able to go, go and ask for more money, be in a position to ask for more money. So the first thing you want to do if you're at any place is you want to ask what training programs are available. Many places have programs, ASE, they'll help you take your tests. Even if there's some expense incurred, if you plan on staying there for a while, show them that you're willing to do the testing because it puts you in a, pay, a position to where I'll give you an example. I worked at a place and the gentleman who was a senior tech, he hung himself uh, after he was let go. And I had done the prerequisites and done all the behind the scenes work to be able to go to some of these classes. And I was the only one. So I got sent. And, you know, granted, that was a, or an unfortunate situation that, that made that happen. Um, it never hurts to be in a position to be uh, viable as a next highly trained person, but you have to show that I can go and do training. If everybody says, oh, certs are for nothing. They're wrong. And, you know, they're just wrong. I want people who, working on my equipment who have information. If I'm if the customer, if I'm turning that, uh, walking in their moccasins for a day, I need to, to relate to the fact that they want someone who's qualified um, and has some background information. Nobody should be starting a diesel repair business without any, any knowledge of how to fix them. I see a lot more people who are willing to go and put their neck on the line, but it's just unwise because it's too complicated. It isn't complicated to specialize in one area though, and that's kind of what I'm getting at. So on to the next. So count your worth monthly. So what you're gonna do is every month, they're gonna put out numbers for how much um, labor that you sold. If you're working for a place that bills out your labor, like a dealership, if you're working for a shop, like mom and pop, and they're billing out your labor, that's how much labor did I sell per month? You're going to look at how much money you made and how much you needed of their support to be able to do that job. Everyone knows mechanics have huge tool bills. That's another talk for another day, but um, it's a fact. And the fact is that if you are buying a scan tool in a shop and they're making you pay for it and use it for the shop, you're in the wrong shop. That's a shop tool. They can't expect a guy who's barely, you know, um, mechanics don't make a ton of money. The only time you make money, and I did it for almost, shit, 17 years, 16 years for other people. I made them a lot of money. I used to keep my printouts, though, from the dealership that said I sold this much labor and I did it at this much efficiency. So labor sold and efficiency are the big the big equation there. So I can go in and negotiate a wage if I know I made you, you know, $30,000 as a business owner and I got paid 3, there's no way that you can look at me and justify that I don't deserve more out of that 30,000 given it was my hands, my brain, my toolbox that made that happen, my body. And these are things that are perishable and the more you use it, the more you lose them. And um, a lot of heavy lifting. It's a, it's a huge wear and tear on your body. So get your uh, payment and be able to negotiate for a, that high, highest pay. But don't ask for it for nothing. Nobody owes you shit. You, you're supposed to be able to say, hey, this is why you owe me more. Not, can you give me some more money? I have too many kids. That's not, it it's no, should have no bearing on your productivity. Um, we'll go over here. What matters to the, this is maybe the biggest one. What matters to the boss matters to me. So if it's important every day that I'm there at such and such time and I'm doing whatever, then do that. If it's more important that after everyone else looks at the job and screws it up that they hand it to you and you still fix it and 
you know, maybe because you have some go something going on in your own life, you're, you, you might be behind five, 10 minutes, sometimes even more. Is he willing to work with you if you're willing to work with him? And is he accounting for your time if you're taking those jobs that are already buried? If there is any money left on those jobs, you should be getting paid first because you were the one that made that happen. That's going to keep your numbers right so you can go in and ask for the raise. Don't save everyone's ass and then expect for them to save yours. They won't. So, um, but make sure you know what it is that's important to your boss. Coming up on five minutes. So, uh, students are humble. And this might, all these are very important. That's why I took just these. I can expound upon these on a YouTube video if, if, you, if it's something you guys find of interest. Feedback is so important in all of this. But students are humble. And what that means is, well, clearly, you have to be a, a teachable person and come to somebody and know that they don't owe you shit as far as explaining how that works. They took long, a long time to amass that information and they don't owe it to you. However, the secret is they will share. If you're cool, if you take your to the tools and borrow them one time, buy it the next time. If you be bring it back immaculately detailed and clean, cleaner than they've ever had it in years probably. If you do those things to go the extra mile to show them, hey, I appreciate you and I respect you, the older hats will help you. They're not going to do it if you come off like an arrogant ass that's owed anything. Because these guys came through the trenches making crap wages. And now they're getting uh, guys coming in making the same exact wage. And I'll tell you, the guy who hung himself, I walked in the door during 2008 when nobody was hiring. I had left Freightliner, worked for a mom and pop, went back to the dealerships working for Peterbilt. And um, they hired me. But I had maxed out all of... Uh, Freightliner self-paced training and done all the things to be, to have a strong hand to walk in there and play my hand well. So the last thing I'm going to say is uh, great students can become great teachers. To know something in its entirety, you have to humble yourself and say, I don't, it's, it's easier to say, teach me, I don't have bad preconceived ideas about this, than to say, um, I don't need to know what you know, I'll figure it out on my own. That's fine, but you're going to draw that long, hard road and you're going to spin your wheels for a lot of years before you're ever going to be making good money. And that's solely an ego move. It doesn't have to be that way. There's a lot of people online that have this kind of stuff available. I'm going to be giving you guys lots of, you know, maybe just imparting some wisdoms that I've learned over 20 plus years in the trades. The biggest thing about it is knowing your worth. And I have here the last thing. Don't be afraid to leave. Listen, some of the best mechanics I've known have had lots of jobs because they know their worth. And when they go back to the boss and they realize this guy is a straw boss and he's just taking them for what all he can. And he says, hey, give me a fair shake. And they go, oh, man, you're a prima donna. That's their favorite word to call you is a prima donna. Um, I had a guy call me a prima donna and walk up to me a year later and said, I'm a I apologize. I've never really seen anyone learn that fast. Well, I wasn't learning on the job. I was learning every single night, training every single night, getting to myself to a position where I could, I could negotiate a wage. Um, so that's all I have to say about this. And I really appreciate you giving me feedback, like, subscribe, you know the deal. Thank you again. Have a good day.